start recording. Okay, so today uh, we are going to say conclude uh, the magnetostatics statics and we will go to the uh, <clears throat> Maxwell's waves and applications uh, chapter. Okay, so if you remember in the last class, uh, we were looking at the inductors and inductance where we looked at how do we find the self inductors and the mutual inductance by taking few examples. And here I asked you to just think about it, why we used M12 and not M21. So has anybody thought about that? He can raise the hand and he can talk. So nobody has thought about it. Hmm? <coughs> See, guys, we used M12, that means what we are doing, we are going to find the flux through one because of the current passing in through two. So to find flux in one, okay, which is this one, the cross section, this is the cross section. That means we need to know the magnetic flux density of two. And the good thing is the magnetic flux density of two around the center is almost a constant. Can you see this? It's almost a constant. It will go in this direction. So therefore, therefore finding the flux using this expression, which is B is equal to mu n i will be varied. Why? Because this expression of H, which is n i, if you remember, it has an assumption. And the assumption is it is only uniform. That is, we are neglecting the field fringes. See here, now the, you know, this, this field is constant here. But when you go to the edges, this field is going to turn like this. Like this. So this expression doesn't hold here. But since we are doing it for our, you know, the first solenoid, which is inside the second solenoid. So this first solenoid, when you look at its cross section, its cross section is so, seeing only the uniform field. That's why M12 is easier. M2, uh, M21 is not easier because, because in M21, you need to find the flux to two due to one, current passing in one. Now, if you see the current passing in one, the, the magnetic flux of one will be uniform inside, but outside it will go like this. See? And I need to integrate this flux along this cross section. So therefore, the magnetic, flux, uh, the magnetic flux density that we are using, which is this one, this is not varied for this yellow. Got it? Because this is the expression which, which neglects this fringes. So this expression is not varied to represent these field, fr field fringes, which unfortunately we were required to find the flux through this orange area. So that's why we will not get the correct answer. And hence, we used the other way around. I hope it is clear now. So whenever a problem comes to you, you need to think about the easiest way and then use it. Okay. So now let's go to the, uh, the next uh, uh, lecture slide, which is 19. And here we already looked at the energy and we, we, we saw that the magnetic, uh, the inductance, the energy stored 
in an inductors is half Li squared. This we did it for a, sol a solenoid. And in fact, as I told you, this is valid for any type of geometry and which we have been using it in our electric circuits as well. So now let's take just one example. And this is an example, you know, which will help you to understand, you know, how we can find the inductance of any wires uh, which has a non-negligible thickness. So this is a coaxial cable. So you have an induct inner conductor and then you have an outer conductor. So the inner conductor is of non-negligible thickness. See, it has a radius of A. And this is my core. And then the outer conductor is of negligible thickness and the radius is P. Now we need to find the inductance of this coaxial cable. Very common because we have used this in our experiment number two. Now, how do we, uh, how do, we do this? Again, the steps are the same. How do you find the inductance? First, identify. So when I'm, taking, when I'm talking about inductance, what type of inductance I'm looking for? Yes. Self-inductance. Self-inductance. We are looking for self-inductance. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to identify the coordinate system, which obviously is a cylindrical. And after that, I will pass the current through the coaxial cable and I will find the magnetic field in our region of interest. So wherever the magnetic field will be non-zero. And once I get the magnetic field, then I will find the inductance. So how do you find the magnetic field here? So let me just uh, uh, say zoom out a little bit. So just to show you. Okay. So now if you see here, now we have, you know, say different regions. So we have rho is less than A, rho is between A and B, and rho is greater than B. So we need to find the magnetic field everywhere. So this is the region where rho is less than A, right? This is the region where rho is between A and B. And this is the region where rho is greater than B. So how do you find the magnetic field? Again, use the Ampere's law and do it. So in order to find it in this part, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a small Ampere's loop inside. And then I will apply the Ampere's law. So again, on the left-hand side, this dot product will just change into mere multiplication, which will become H times the length of this loop, which is two pi rho is equal to, what is the current enclosed in this loop? I have already explained that you know, when we, when we looked at the problem. So it will be nothing but, it will be I times rho squared over A squared because this complete, you know, uh, radius A, so the cross section is pi A squared. So the complete pi A squared is carrying the current I. So this green area will be carrying the fraction of the current and the area of this green area is pi rho squared. So therefore, it is I times pi rho square over pi A square, pi pi cancels. So it is I times rho square plus uh, rho square divided by A square. So therefore, this is the magnetic field. I rho over two pi A square. Now within this region, within the yellow region, in the yellow region, what we are going to do? We are going to now put the Ampere's loop in the region of our interest, which is this region. And then, we will apply the Ampere's law. So again, what you will get, yes, what you will get, H times two pi rho, which is on the left-hand side, because enclosed line integral H bar dot DL bar will become H times the length of this uh, loop, which is two pi rho, because I'm assuming the radius is rho, is equal to not current enclosed. So what is the current enclosed here? What is the current enclosed in this loop? The current enclosed in this loop is, yes, only I, 
Yes, only this part, right? Because the current is only carrying in this part and the, it is the whole current, I. So that's why it is I here. And from there, I will get H bar as I over 2 pi rho A phi. This is the second region. Now the third region. So in the third region, I have to put the Ampere's law outside rho is equal to B. So I'm, I will now put the Ampere's law, uh, the Ampere's loop. I'm now putting the Ampere's loop outside. And this is the radius again rho. So again, it will be for this one, again, it will be H times two pi rho is equal to, now what will be the current enclosed in this loop? Yes, what will be the zero. current zero? It will be first this current, which is here. And what is this current? This current is I, right? And is there any other current? Yes, is there any other current? Yeah, so just now your friend told, see, there is another current here. Can you see this? Because here, the current is flowing in one direction, I, and this blue one is the current flowing in the other direction, which is minus I. So what is the net current? So the net current is I minus I, which is equal to zero. And that's why you are seeing it zero. So therefore, your magnetic field is existing inside your center uh, wire of non-negligible thickness and also in this region. So that means you have the magnetic field in this red region and yellow region. So if you have the magnetic field in the red region and the yellow region, then your inductance uh, or your, uh, uh, your self-inductance or your energy, magnetic energy will be stored in these two regions, the red region and yellow region. Now, for such cases where our wire is of non-negligible thickness, rather than using our typical you know, uh, steps, which we followed in our previous case, where we went, we, we went and we found the flux and then the flux linkage and the self induction but for the non-negligible wire thickness, we usually don't go for this approach. We use the, the energy concept. So what we do is we know that the energy of the inductor is half Li square. So therefore what we do is from here, we will find the L. So that means I need to find the energy which is stored in the inductor. So from the energy, we will find the inductance. Now, how do we find the energy stored in the inductor? So since we have, since we have the uh, inductance, uh, sorry, since we have the magnetic field in this region, which is this region and this region. So therefore, let us find the energy which is stored in this region, which is rho between A and B, and in this region, which is rho less than A. And why we have the energy in only in this two region? Because the magnetic field or the magnetic flux density exists in that region. So therefore, since the magnetic field or magnetic flux density can have the energy, they can store the energy. So therefore, our energy will be in this region. And how we can find the energy? By, how can you find the energy? We know the magnetic field, and then we just integrate it over the volume. So we will first integrate it over our inside volume, which is a cylinder of radius A and length D and this volume. And what will be this volume? It will be again a cylinder, but its rho is starting from A to B and its length is D. So this is what we are doing. So M1, which is the energy stored in rho is less than A, M2, which is the energy stored between A and B. And we will find it. So integral Z, that is the length is from zero to D, phi, zero to two pi, rho from zero to A, which is our center conductor of non-negligible thickness. So this is the magnetic field. Uh, this is, 
the magnetic field square integrating over the wall and you will get this second is between a and b so therefore the volume will be again it will be a cylinder of length d see 0 to d and phi takes the complete in the uh, limits 0 to 2 pi whereas rho is between a and b and then we get this therefore my l is two times the addition of both the energies over i square and if i substitute these two energies i will get this as the inductance of a coaxial cable whose central wire is of non negligible and usually we go for coaxial cables and two wire transmission lines we usually go for inductance per unit length so therefore let's divide the inductance with its length so here we assumed that the length is d so therefore Let's divide this expression with D. So if we divide this expression with D, we will get inductance per unit length as mu naught over eight pi plus mu naught ln of B over A over two. So this is called as the inductance. And if you see here, this term and this term, we have two terms. So this term is coming from the inductance, which is inside the center wire which is inside the center wire. So this is called as internal inductance. And this is coming from the region between A and B. This is between the region A and B, and this is region less than A. So this is called as external inductance. This is called as internal. And now can anybody tell me which inductance is measurable? With our inductance meter, with our LCR meter, which inductance can be measured? The external inductance. So the external inductance can be measured. The internal inductance cannot be measured. Okay, the internal inductance, we know it exists, but we cannot measure it with any of our measuring equipment because, because we, this is inside the center wire and the center wire is already solid so we cannot measure it but this we can measure okay so this is an example where we can use the concept of energy for finding the inductance of any wire of non-negligible thickness okay so this actually concludes our chapter uh, this uh, eight, where we looked into the inductance, we looked into the boundary conditions, we looked into the magnetic force. Okay. And now we are moving it to the next part, which is the part four waves and applications. So, where we have our chapter nine, which is the Maxwell's equation. Okay. So, any questions till now before going to our lecture 20? So in lecture 20, uh, what is our main objective? Our main objective is we will see how Maxwell has modified one of the equations. So we know the Maxwell's equation, right? The Maxwell equations of, we say, static field. So we have two coming from the electrostatics, which is the Gauss's law of electric field, and uh, uh, the conservation of en uh, uh, electrostatic energy. And then two is coming from the magnetostatics, which is the Ampere's law and Gauss's law of magnetic field. So these are the four ones, right? Now here, what we are doing is, when we move to a time dependent fields, then what will happen? So that we are trying to know, see, which is nothing but if you remember, this is our case 2D. Because in our case 2A, when we started magnetostatics, I explained it to you, there our current was a constant. It was a DC current. But now, here, our sources are going to be time varying. 
So when we have sources which are time varying, then that will generate a time varying magnetic field and the time varying uh, electric fields. And there you will see some changes. And these are the changes that we are going to discuss today. So what are the changes that we are uh, going to see? Our starting point is this expression. Can you see? This is our expression. So in the statics, it was only x, y, z. Your electric and magnetic field were only the function of x, y, z. Now you have the time varying field. So time varying field means what? Now your electric field and magnetic field are a function of our spatial coordinates, which are already here. But in addition to that, it has another component, which is time. So our starting equation is this equation. If you see here, this is our starting equation. And this starting equation is called as the Faraday's law of induction. So we will, we will start with this equation, Faraday's law of induction. Now, what does this Faraday's law of induction is saying? The Faraday's law of induction is saying that del cross E bar is equal to minus dou B bar over dou T. Oh, so here now we are learning something new. And what it says, it says that if I have a time varying magnetic flux density or magnetic field, then this time varying magnetic flux density or magnetic field has a tendency or it has an ability to generate an electric field, to generate an electric field. That means it can induce an electric field. But this is only possible when your B bar is time varying because if your B bar is if your magnetic flux density is not time varying, then the right hand side will simply become zero. And this is the expression for the, if you remember, this is the expression for the, for the conservation of energy. Del cross E is equal to zero. That is closed line integral, closed line integral E bar dot DL bar is, is equal to zero. So what we have studied about the conservation of energy will stay. So this expression is not contradicting anything because in this is equal to zero only in the static case, only in the static case. So when my magnetic flux density becomes static, it doesn't become, it is not a function of time. So the right hand side will become zero. And we will go back to our static case, which we have studied in chapter four, five, and six. Now, when my B bar is not a function, uh, sorry, is, is now a function of time, then my del cross E bar is not equal to zero. Or I would say the E bar will not equal to zero. So the time varying magnetic field has a capability of producing an electric field. This is called as the Faraday's law of induction, which again Faraday was able to show it with the experiment. So he was able to show that using an experiment. So that's why this is our starting. Now, if you see here, this is the expression. Now we are just modifying a little bit. So what we I'm doing is I'm putting an integral, I'm, I'm integrating over the surface, both left-hand side and right-hand side. So if I integrate both left-hand side and right-hand side, then this is nothing but if I apply Stokes theorem, the surface integration del cross E bar dot DS, I can change it to in closed line integral e bar dot dl. So it says that 
the closed line integral of e bar bar dot dl bar that is the circulation of the electric field over a closed line is nothing but is the minus integral over surface dou b bar over dou t times ds it is nothing but the negative surface integral of the magnetic the, the derivative of the magnetic flux density that you are integrating over a surface and this surface is nothing but it's the surface which is enclosed by this line this closed loop or closed path so this is the faraday's law in integral form so this is the faraday's law in integral form and this is the faraday's law in differential form so if you if you remember all our statics and uh, magnetostatics and electrostatics as i have always told you in our equations the right hand side is the source for the left hand side so the right hand side is the source for the left hand side so here this is becoming the source the responsible for generation of this one okay if you take ampere's law in the ampere's law current current is on the right hand side of the equation and the left hand side is your magnetic field so therefore current is responsible for magnetic field in electrostatics it is gauss's law of electric field Ch charge enclosed so your charges or charge density is on the right hand side which is your source and the left hand side is your electric field which is your result that is your charges are generating those field so if we use the similar uh, similar idea here the right hand side is the source responsible for the left hand side so this is responsible for this electric so now there is a small example and in this small example what we are doing is we are now saying that we have a time varying electric field uh, so magnetic flux density b bar see it is now b not co cosine omega t times k z b not is a some constant and he is saying that this is existing somewhere in the region less than b okay so it's a cylindrical coordinates so this is the region this is this is the b so it is existing in this region okay it is existing in this region less than b so this is my b bar and now i'm putting a dot here <coughs> because it is cosine but we know it with time it, it 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 becomes positive and negative positive and negative it will not fluctuate according to this frequency now we need to find the induced ef so remember guys we use the word induced you know very frequent we are we will use the induced you know uh, word very frequent from now onwards so induced is nothing but this is the electric field which is being generated because of this okay so the induced electric field so now how we will go we will follow the same faraday's law in integral form and then what we are going to do is you know as we have been doing so here we are again going to now put a small loop and we are going to apply this faraday's law to that loop but now i am not going to call this loop as ampere's ampere in loop no because there is no ampere law the expression is similar because here it is closed line integral but i am just putting this hypothetical loop and this hypothetical loop has a radius of rho and i am now applying this so if i apply this then what we will get we will get okay so i think i need to just erase this because i need to go to the next page so if i apply this what i will get i will get this see e times 2 pi rho is omega b not sin omega t pi rho square and how i am getting this it is the same idea here the idea is the same so what is the idea 
this is my closed loop on which I'm applying my expression. So it is, it will become E bar dot DL bar is equal to, sorry, E bar dot DL bar is equal to minus integral over surface dou B bar over dou. So now here, what we are doing is we are doing the same idea. So we are saying here again that your, it is nothing but closed surface integral E multiplied by DL. And then from here, why we are seeing, we are seeing this because my E generated electric field will have a only phi component. It will have only a phi component. And my DL will also have on phi. So it will be phi. And therefore, this will become E closed line integral DL and E times two pi rho. Very similar to how we did it, you know, in the last chapter, you know, two chapters. Now, why your electric field is a function of phi? That is now explained here, okay? Because my dou B bar over dou T, see my B bar, B bar is a function of AZ, okay? B bar is a function of AZ. And we know that del cross E, differential form of the same equation is what? Minus dou B bar over dou T. So now if my right-hand side is a function of only AZ, if it is only AZ, okay, uh, no, I should not write F. If it is only a function of AZ, then can you open del cross E? Yes, we can open del cross E in cylindrical coordinates and we will get a sum term of AZ. And then when we equate these two, from there, we can find that your E will only be a function of uh, where it is, uh, not this one, so it will be a function of this one, yes, it will be a function of E5. Now, E rho again cannot come. Now, why E rho cannot come? Because your electric field, you know, will be circulating. And this also comes from a little bit of experience because uh, you will see that my, our electric field and our magnetic field will always be 90 degrees to each other. So from those concepts, we can say that this doesn't exist. So I want you guys to go and look at it, why it doesn't exist. And if you can understand, it's very good. But if you have any doubt why, then you can come back to me. You can you know, ex uh, ask me, uh, say either during the office hours or send an email and I can help you understand this, okay? Now is equal to the right-hand side. Now, what is the right-hand side? The right-hand side is this. So first find dou B bar over dou T. So you can find the dou B bar over dou T and then integrate it over the surface DS. Now, what will be the surface here? The surface will be the surface which is enclosed by my pink closed part. This is the surface. It will be enclosed by my pink. And this, if you do, you will get it as this one, which is which is this. So omega B0 sine omega T. This is dou B bar over dou T. Now integrating over the surface, integrating over the surface. Now, if you see here, my dou B bar over dou T is a constant. 
If my dou B bar over dou T is a constant, then I can simply take it like this. So it is minus integral over the surface dou B bar over dou T times T S. And this is becoming integral over the surface omega B naught. So minus into minus, it will become plus omega B naught sine omega T time D S. Okay. So, you know, this will, this will also, this will, uh, your, this will be AZ and this will also be AZ. So AZ dot AZ will go away. And this is a constant and this constant, I'm, I can take it outside. So omega B naught sine omega T integral over the surface T S. Now, what is the area of that? You know, a, the, the area which is enclosed by that loop is nothing but omega B naught sine omega T times pi rho square. So this is the right hand side. And therefore, this is your electric field, which is A5. And this is again telling that my electric field, which is induced because of the magnetic field, uh, because of the time varying, negative time varying magnetic field, you will see that they will be 90 degrees to each other. See, this is A5. And this is AZ. And we know AZ and A5, they are 90 degrees. Degrees. So this is inside this region. Now, how about outside the region? So again, I can put a small closed loop. And this is now rho. Again, following the same argument, the left-hand side will become E 2 pi rho. Now, what will be the right-hand side? So, so what will be the right hand side? So the right hand side, we have to do integral over S dou B bar over dou T times DS. So this is minus omega naught, sorry, plus omega naught sine omega T integral over the surface DS. So where I'm going to integrate my omega naught T over which surface? Yes. Do will I will I integrate it over the? I need to integrate over this surface. See this yellow surface. I need to integrate it over this yellow surface. Integrate it over your yellow surface. But remember, my b bar is only restricted to this region. Here, my B bar doesn't exist. Here, my B bar doesn't exist. So what will be this area? Will this area be pi rho square? Yes, Mr. Abdur or Radwan, can you tell me? Uh, yes, Doctor. Yes, you can. Can you tell me here what will be the integral over the surface ds? Uh, it will be uh, because, from zero to y and no, because you see my b bar is now only restricted in this region. It is only within this region. It is not. It, it is not existing here. So if you want to integrate this b bar over the surface. So what will be the surface here? You mean which coordinate? Yeah, and not the coordinates because it is a, see, this is, this is a constant, right? So I already took it yes. outside. So now we are just finding the area. There, yes. Should I use the area of this yellow part or should I use the area of this red part? No, of uh, the red bar only. Yes, yeah. so you have to use only the red part. Uh, thank you, Abdullah. Why we have, we have to use only the red part, guys? Because your B bar exists only in the red part. So even if you need to integrate over the yellow part, here nothing is there to integrate. You, your, your magnetic, your, your minus dou B bar over dou T doesn't exist here. So if you integrate here, it will be zero. So eventually only integration over this area will be the non-zero part. So therefore, you will see it as omega naught 
sin omega t times, it will be pi b square, which is the area of this red cone. And this is what we got here. This is what we got here. See, it is pi b square. And therefore, this is the area. And now, you know, we have, we have concluded something, you know, which is surprising. What is that? See here, what is that? If your magnetic field is only restricted in this much region, but the induced electric field because of this time varying magnetic field is not restricted in this region. It can go further, far away. Again, I'm repeating, your magnetic field is only, your, your magnetic flux density is only restricted in this region and it is time varying, but the induced electric field, that is the electric field which is generated by this magnetic field, is not only in this region, but it can exist outside also like this. It can exist outside also. So this is the induced electric field because of the negative time varying magnetic field. Now, in, in this, you know, electric field, which is already induced, see here? So this is my magnetic field. And because of that, the electric field is induced. So this is my, the, the region of my magnetic field. See, this is my region of my magnetic flux density, which is rho is less than D. Now, and I have seen that this is generating an electric field, which is circulating because it is in phi direction, right? So it is circulating. So you are, you are getting the electric field in this direction, see, like this. And it will also exist outside as well. Now, if you put a small, wire loop, you know, a metallic wire loop, a conductor wire loop in this region, then what will happen? Yes. If I put a small wire in this region, then what will happen? See, if this is my small wire, blue color wire, it is a conductor made, made up of, you know, any metal, maybe copper. And if I, and the wire is closed, and if I put the wire here, what do you think will happen to the wire? Yes. Mr. Whom? Mr. Ali Al Shams, can you tell me? Uh, doctor, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, it will produce magnetic field, maybe. Yes. No. No, no. The magnetic field is already here and the electric field is generated. Now think in the following lines. With this electric, with the influence of this electric field, what may happen inside the wire? There will be internal uh, inductance, maybe. See, okay, I'm, I'm giving you the hint. See this expression, which we derived? Now, can, can you tell me what will happen? Maybe Ali Al Shams, you can also comment. Look at this expression. Yes, doctor. Yeah, look at this expression and think about it. If there I- There will be current uh, moving inside the- inside What the, is moving? A current. Exactly, the current. See this expression? The source of this J bar is E bar. E bar is the source of this J bar. So now you have all this E bar circulating like this red color. Now, if I put a small loop here, then this loop 
will produce a current according to this point form of ohm's law see this e bar will be responsible for the current density and that current density direction is also the same as the direction of e which is go, going round and round and since this current density direction and the cross section of your wire are 90 degrees to each other you will see that there will be a current flowing in this conductor there will be a current flowing in this conductor or if you say an emf will be developed an emf electromotive force how if you if you cut this wire like this and put a voltmeter here then you will see a voltage being created and that is called as the EMF. And how to find the terminals of the EMF? First, identify the direction of the current. And then, once you know the direction of the current, then you will find the current, uh, the, the terminals. So how, once you cut, the entering is positive and the leaving is negative. This is called as EMF, electromotive force. Or now the Faraday's law, you know, is nothing but in a very simplified form, it is saying that your EMF is generated and this is the EMF, close line integral E bar dot DL bar. Or it is also equal to minus integral over S to V bar over to V dot ts because these two are already equal and because of these two you are getting a current flowing here and if you if you uh, say put an ammeter if you connect an ammeter you will see a current flowing or if you put a voltmeter you will see a voltage induced here and that is called as the electromotive force so this is what the faraday's law is so this is a simplified form of Faraday's law, which is talking from the EMF point of view. This is another form of Faraday's law. Okay, they are all the same. <clears throat> now, this EMF or the, you know, the, the, the EMF which is produced, uh, they can be classified into three types. It can be classified into three types. First is by a stationary loop in a time varying field. Okay, so what is that loop? Loop is nothing but this loop which I am talking about, the current, the, the conductor. So if the conductor loop is stationary, that is, it is not moving, and your magnetic flux density is time varying then an emf will be created and that is called as transformer emf which is nothing but this example our loop is stationary but our magnetic flux density is time varying so this the type of ems which is created is called as a transformer emf why because our transformers the emf which is created in the transformers is based on the stationary loop and the time varying magnetic flux density then you have the second type where my magnetic flux density is stationary. That means my magnetic flux density is a constant, but my loop is now moving. The loop is now moving. How? It is now time varying. So loop is moving means it is not moving, you know, uh, independent of time. It is moving with respect to time. Maybe it is vibrating it is moving up and down then still that can also generate an emf which is called as motional emf and this is because of the motion of the loop that means the loop is time varying it is time varying moving and the third one is both of them superimposed that is your magnetic field is also time varying and your loop is also moving with time both then this will produce both transformer and motional emf and we will first consider the transformer emf and whatever we did here it is in fact a transformer emf okay 
it is the transformer emf and this is exactly the examples so derive the emf induced in the circular loop of radius a is less than b in the previous examples by two methods so this was our previous example where we already found the electric flux the, the electric field induced by this time varying magnetic uh, flux density now he is saying that i have inserted a loop and this loop is of radius <clears throat> less than b so which is here it is this is the loop because this is the radius a so it is less than a and then we need to find the emf in so there are two methods maybe this we will go and look at it in our next class okay so uh, we will stop here uh, anything else you want to ask